Hello and welcome to lesson 38 of Additional Maths with Mr. Barrow. Today we're going to be looking at finding stationary points on a graph. Okay, before we have a look at this worked example, let's talk about what stationary points are. Okay, so a little preamble about stationary points. So if we have this, this function here, this, this graph of this function, y equals f of x, it has lots of turns in it, okay? This curve has four stationary points. Where are they? Have a look at it and think. Where are points which might be defined as stationary points? What does it mean to be a stationary point? So the four stationary points are those four points there. So A, B, C, and D. Those four points are the points on the graph where the gradient of the curve is zero. So if you drew a tangent to the curve at those points, the tangent would be horizontal. So the gradient is zero. So if we think about how the graph is changing in the y direction as we go from left to right, then at these points, the graph is not going up or down. It is momentarily stationary. So in that moment, it's not going anywhere. If you think about throwing a pen up in the air, it has a stationary point when it reaches the top of its journey before it starts coming down. So it's, it's heading upwards with a positive velocity and then it stops and is still for a moment. It is stationary for a moment in the air at the top of its flight and then it starts coming down with a negative velocity. So a stationary point is a point on a graph where the gradient is equal to zero. So at each of these points, we know that dy by dx, which is the gradient of the curve at a specific point, is equal to zero. So that is going to be key. So at stationary points, the gradient is zero. Now naming these different stationary points, they, they have different names. A is called a maximum point. A maximum point on a graph is, is like the top of a hill. It is a stationary point at which you go up to it from the left and then come down from it to the right, okay? C is called a minimum point. And it's like the bottom of a valley, okay? So you go down towards it from the left and then you go up away from it to the right. B and D are called points of inflection. And depending on where you are, you will spell the, the word inflection differently. Okay, so point, points of inflection, either CT or X, depending on where you are. Okay, so points of inflection are points which are have a gradient of zero, but are not maxima or minima. Okay, so um, at B, for example, you go down towards it and then you go down away from it. So it's on a general downward slope, but it's a, it's a point which is momentarily gradient of zero at that point there. Okay. Um, the maxima and minima do not mean that they are the maxima or minimum point on the entire graph. For example, point A is not the maximum point of the entire graph. You can see points over here, okay, as we go on onwards, y was fx, which are above A. So A is not the greatest value of y. It is simply, it's known strictly as a local maximum. It is the maximum point in a small region but we just call it in general a maximum point. Okay, same with C. C is a minimum point, although the graph does have points which are lower than it. Okay, so it is called a local minimum, but we just call it minimum for short. Okay, so let's have a look at how we put that into, pro into, into practice with our example here. So what we want to do with this example is we want to find the coordinates of the stationary points on this curve, this cubic curve, y equals 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 12x plus 4. And we want to use those to sketch the curve. So having maxima, minimum points, stationary points will help us to draw relatively accurate sketches of different curves. So. To start with, when we want to sketch this curve, we want to think about 
in general, what, what do we think it's going to look like before we start? This curve here is a positive cubic curve. The highest power of x is power of 3, so it's cubic, and the, the cubic part has a positive coefficient, 2. And then we have lower powers of x, so x squared, and x to the power of 1, and an x to the power of 0. Okay, so it is a, a basic cubic, it's a positive cubic, and so it should have a shape of this form. So that's what you expect cubics to have a shape of. Okay, so we're expecting to have a maximum point at point A and a minimum point at point B. Okay, so it's nice to expect what, what it's going to look like and visualize it before we draw it, before we get the information. So if we get information which contradicts this, we might think hmm, maybe we've gone wrong somewhere. So that's what we're expecting. Now, the next bit is let's find the, the stationary points on this curve. So stationary points are points on the curve where the gradient is equal to zero. So the first thing you should do is differentiate and find the gradient function for this curve. So if y is equal to that cubic, then dy by dx is equal to, so 2x cubed, if we differentiate that, becomes 6x squared. The old power, 3, comes down, multiplies by the 2, and then the power drops by 1. The minus 3x squared becomes minus 6x to the power of 1. And the minus 12x to the power of 1 becomes minus 12x to the power of 0, or just minus 12. The 4 becomes 0 when we differentiate it. So that's our gradient function. 6x squared minus 6x minus 12. That will tell us the gradient for any point on the curve. Now, what we want is we want to know when the gradient is equal to 0. So at stationary points, dy by dx will equal 0. So what we want to solve is we want to solve the equation 6x squared minus 6x minus 12 is equal to 0. So this is just a quadratic. So I could factorize at this point, but I, I noticed that at this point, it seems like it's a quadratic that I can simplify. I could divide everything by 6. So x squared minus x minus 2 is equal to 0 will have the same solutions that 6x squared minus 6x minus 12 equals 0 has. Factorize it. So x minus 2, x plus 1 equals 0. And therefore, I know that x is either equal to 2 or x is equal to negative 1. So what are those points? What, 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 is, what does that mean? Those are the x values at which the curve has a gradient of 0. So those are the x-coordinates of our stationary points. At this point, we want to find the y-coordinate for each one. Okay, So we look back at our original function, y equals 2x cubed, so this original part of the question, and we use that to find the y-coordinates. So for the first y-coordinate, when x is 2, we substitute 2 in as our x coordinate in y equals 2 times x cubed minus 3 times x squared minus 12 times x plus 4. So I'll just do a little bit of working out over here. So when x is 2, y will equal 2 times 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 4. And that equals negative 16. Okay, so I've got my y coordinate. When x is 2, y is negative 16. And I do the same process. I'm not going to write it all down, the workings out for that. But we plug in negative 1 this time to find the y coordinate from that function y equals 2x cubed, etc. And you get y equals 11 for that coordinate when x is negative 1. So the stationary points, and I'm going to go from left to right. The leftmost stationary point is the coordinate minus 1, 11. And the one on the right is 2, minus 16. Those are the stationary points. OK, so we have our two stationary points, which on our expected graph were A and B. Now, 
I'm going to start to sketch the function y equals 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 12x plus 4 on a graph with those two bits of information and one other bit of information as well, the y-intercept. So have a think about what the y-intercept might be on the graph. So there's my axes. I know I'm going to need to go across left 1 and up 11 and right 2 and down 16. Okay, so I can just um, decide my scale that will give me that. So minus 111, let's, let's say that that minus 1 is there. So that'd be 1, so that'd be 2. And then I'm just going to use 11 to be about yay high. And minus 16 to be, if 11 is there, 11 will be there, 16 will be about there. It's, it's only a sketch. It says sketch the curve, so it doesn't have to be that accurate. So my stationary points are there and there. Now, where's the y-intercept? The y-intercept is the value of y when x is equal to 0. If I substituted x as 0 into this into this function here, into this equation, okay, the formula for y, then I will get y is equal to 4. So 4 is our y-intercept, okay? So we write a y-intercept there, and then I can draw my curve. And my curve will go through those points, and I know the general shape. It comes up, goes down, then goes back up again. So I know it's going to look something like this. That's the maximum point, the y-intercept there, minimum point, and then it'll go on like that. So that is my sketch. I haven't worked out the roots, the, the roots which there are clearly three roots of this function. I haven't worked those out because I haven't been asked to. So if I had asked and state the values of the roots, then I would need to do some extra work, okay? Which wouldn't necessarily be easy. They would probably have to give me one root so that then I could use the factor theorem and polynomial division to find out the other roots, okay? But that would be far more marks than this question needed. This question is only asked for the stationary points and then a general sketch. Okay, so I've got my stationary points and I've stated the y-intercept as well that, because that is very easy to, to show on the graph. Okay, so the general points we, we, we used in order to sketch this. Firstly, first part, we differentiated. We set that gradient function equal to zero and solved. We then found out the y-coordinates. So step three is find the y-coordinates for each of the x-coordinates that we found in our solution. And then step four, put them on a sketch and detail the y-intercept as well. Okay, so step one, differentiate. Step two, solve when that gradient function equals zero. Step three, find the y-coordinates as well. And step four, sketch it. Okay, let's see how you do with this question. So I want you to find the coordinates of any stationary points on the curve y equals x cubed minus 12x plus 3. And use those coordinates to sketch the curve. Okay. So pause at this point. Go through the process. And I'll go through the answer. Okay. So the answer. Firstly, differentiate dy by dx is 3x squared minus 12. Solve when that equals 0. So 3x squared minus 12 equals 0. Well, for this, this is a basic quadratic which doesn't have any x parts. So you can simply um, add 12 to both sides, divide by 3 and find out what x squared equals. Okay, so, or, or divide by 3 to get x squared minus 4 equals 0. You can either factorise this point into two brackets or state x squared equals 4. Okay, this one has is nice. It 
It's the difference of two squares, so it's x plus 2, x minus 2 equals 0, which means that x is either negative 2 or x is positive 2. And you would have gotten that as well if you'd done a different path from that point and added 4 to both sides, so x squared equals 4. So if x squared is equal to 4, then x is equal to the positive or negative square root of 4. So it's positive or negative 2. Okay. So those are our two x values. Now, to find the y values, we simply substitute those x values into the original function. When x is minus 2, y is equal to 19. When x is 2, y is equal to negative 13. So there we have our two coordinates. Minus 2, 19 is the first one on the left, and 2 minus 13 is the one on the right. This is a positive cubic function, so we're expecting that shape. And we found the maximum and the minimum points. Okay, minus 2, 19 and 2 minus 13. The y-intercept will be 3. So our sketch will look something like this. We know minus 2, 19. So 2 left, 19 up. And then 2 right and 13 down, so it's not quite as far down. And the y-intercept was 3. Let me write down the equation of the function. y equals x cubed minus 12x plus 3. So we've got that. So it goes through at 3. And so our graph will look something like this. Where it goes through those points. And make sure that you state all the coordinates. So you give indications where all the coordinates are, either by little marks on the axes or at the coordinate themselves. You can state 2, minus 13, and minus 2, 19 if you want as well. Okay, again, I haven't stated what the roots of this function are because I wasn't asked to. Okay, that would be a whole other level of work. So there we go. Well done if you got that sketch. Okay, correct. And what you should do now is you should practice this process. Exercise 14.3 from the textbook is the best place to go for more questions like this. Okay, where you're asked to find the gradient, find the values of x for which the gradient is zero, classify the points, i.e. say that whether they're maximum or minimum points, okay, by thinking about the general shape of the curve. Is this a negative quadratic. If it's a negative quadratic, it'll look like that, okay? And so you will have a maximum point. Is it a negative cubic? In which case you'll have like that, and therefore you'll have a minimum point followed by a maximum point, okay? So have a think about the general shape of the curve when you're trying to classify the points. In lesson 39, I'm going to teach you another a different way of how to decide whether a point is a maximum or a minimum point, okay, using something called the second derivative, okay? But at the moment, all you need for now is to generally decide, visualize the shape of the curve, and then state whether you've got a minimum or a maximum, okay? So exercise 14.3, become more fluent, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Enjoy.